Hi, Leo. I did have a question for you about uh, DNS. A friend of mine said uh, uh, when I'm using my net, my ISP that I should never use my ISP's DNS, that I should use uh, something like uh, Komodo's no, or uh, no, Google no, Public. No. Yeah, don't use Komodo's, whatever you do. Um, so, interesting, your friend, I'm not sure what your friend's rationale is, but let me explain what's going on, and, I'll, and you can use somebody else's. But uh, the DNS stands for Domain Name System. It's just a big phone book. When you surf the Internet, you use words like yahoo.com, but your computer needs a number. They need the actual uh, address, the, what we call the IP or Internet Protocol address of that website. 168.3.4.129 or whatever it is. It's always four numbers from 0 to 255, actually from 1 to 255, separated by dots. No, I guess it could be 0 in the, third, in the last three positions. Separated by dots. So uh, that's a dotted quad, they call it. And that's, what, that's the phone number for a website. So uh, the DNS is just a phone book. You don't have to use your ISP's DNS. In most cases, uh, it's the fastest what will happen when you enter in yahoo.com in your browser is your browser will ask the cache, because a lot of these are cached in your computer. Do you know that? Nope. Yes, I didn't, yes, nope. I didn't know that. And that. No, I'm asking the computer oh. saying, do you, <laughs> I know you know this. I'm telling everybody else. You know all this. Sorry, I have to do a little explanation, right? You know about mic drop, too? Do you know what that means? Okay. So, <laughs> uh, and so, and then if it doesn't find it in its own cache, then it will ask the router. And if it doesn't know, the router doesn't know, it'll ask the ISP. If the ISP doesn't know, it asks the ISP's ISP. And it goes all the way up to the, the root domain servers. There are 13 of them around the world. That's it, 13. <clears throat> when you buy a domain, you're buying an entry in that phone book. Your domain registrar will send it to one of those root servers, and it'll propagate all the way down. Uh, and that's why it sometimes takes some time to propagate throughout the system so that everybody knows your address and your phone number. So can you use somebody else's? You can. You can use Google's. You can use, there's a company I like called OpenDNS at OpenDNS.com that offers their domain name servers. It's not necessarily um, better or worse. Now, here's why your friend is saying this. Some ISPs will attempt to use DNS to get ads into your system. So if you, <clears throat> for instance, and OpenDNS will do this too, enter, you know, instead of typing Yahoo, you type YHAH00 by accident, uh, and there's no address, nothing at, at that address, it will pop up, instead of the normal thing, which is there's nothing at this address, it'll pop up, here's some other things you might be interested in, which is an ad. And, uh, and there are other things ISPs might, do uh, of a somewhat nefarious nature if you're using their domain name server. But they can do it to you anyway, by the way, because you're going through them no matter what. So if what I would suggest is f using the fastest domain name server you can. Usually that is your ISPs. Um, but there are DNS testers that you can run. My friend Steve Gibson, we mentioned him earlier, um, uh, has written one that will go out. It's called the DNS. Uh, let's see, what is it called? The DNS. Uh, I can't remember. Benchmark or something like that. And it'll go out and it will go test a bunch of public DNSs. Remember, it has to be a public one so you can use it, and see which one's the fastest. Yeah, if you if you Google DNS benchmark, you'll find it at grc.com. So you can run this. It's a Windows program. You run it, and it will go through them all, and, and it takes a little while because it's querying them, querying them, querying them, till, and then, figure, then it ranks them and tells you who the fastest is. If, if speed is the issue... Now, here's the issue. If, if the domain name server is flaky or unreliable or slow, that slows down everything because you enter yahoo.com, and now you have to wait till you get a res, you know, the, the lookups done and then you can go there. And so a bad DNS server can be a problem. I would use your ISPs unless you know of a reason not to. It's either slow or your ISP. Who's your ISP? Uh, well, it was up until yesterday Verizon and now it's uh, Frontier. Verizon just sold their... Uh, right. so. Yeah, ironically, a lot of people use Verizon's <laughs> Because they have, they run a public DNS server. A lot of people use Verizon's. Well, I think it's 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. I can't remember, but a lot of people use that. 
Uh, on the Mac, there's a program called Name Bench. We'll put both of these DNS benchmark programs in our show notes at techguylabs.com. So if you want it, 8.8.8 .8 .8 is Google, right? Yeah. What's Verizon? It's uh, similar. Anyway, um, I would just use, uh, you know, the, the, you, the one, first of all, everybody listening already is using your ISPs unless you've done otherwise. Because when you uh, set up your router or the ISP's router, it automatically uses theirs. That's, that's by default. So you have to explicitly enter something else. I like DNS, uh, OpenDNS, because they have other features like filtering and things that they can do. Um, that make them appealing to me, but I would, I would, I would check it out. Um, but there are lots of them. There are lots of them. So I, I, unless your friend knows there's something that Frontiers or, or Verizon is doing that they don't like, there's no reason not to use them. Let me ask you one more quick question. Um, would it be, be if I were to do this? Would it be better to do it right through the router or yes. on each individual computer? Do it on the router because you only have to change it once. You can change it on each computer individually, but if you change it on the router, it's done. Okay. Thanks a lot, Leo. You're Appreciate welcome. Your help. Yeah, uh, I I I think it's an interesting question. I, uh, it's a lot of times people are looking for tweaks. <laughs> It's so funny because modern computers really you open the box, you plug them in, and you know they just kind of work and you use them. But that bugs people. Uh, it's their, I mean they're appliances these days. Nobody says, "Hey, is there a way I can uh, I can soup up my toaster? Is there any maintenance I need to do to my toaster?" Yeah, you clean the crumb catcher before it catches fire. That's about it. Um, and so they they want to do stuff to improve their experience because we used to have to. Nowadays, you don't really, you don't have to do a disk optimization or a defrag. You don't have to clean up temp files. You don't have to do any memory, you know, reallocation. You don't have to do any of that stuff. You don't have to change your DNS server, really. None of that. Just out of the box, the defaults are almost always the best to stick with. If, however, you notice you're having slow browsing, maybe one of the, run one of these benchmarks to see if it's your ISP's problem. And then you could change it to somebody who's better and faster. The reason your ISP is usually the best is because they're the closest to you. They're the first place you go on the Internet. So if you use theirs, it's likely to be the quickest, unless there's something wrong with it. Uh, if there is, that's another, that's another matter entirely.